Moving Charges and Magnetism Introduction The branch of physics which deals with magnetism due to the electric current is called electromagnetism. For a long time, it was hard to believe that there existed a relation between electricity and magnetism. Hans Christian Ørsted observed a pivoted magnet was deflected when kept in the neighborhood of a wire carrying current. This situation is depicted in the figure. It is noticeable when the current is large and the needle is sufficiently close to the wire so that the earth's magnetic field may be ignored. Reversing the direction of the current reverses the orientation of the needle. The deflection increases on increasing the current or bringing the needle closer to the wire. Look at the figure for the same. Magnetic field, Lorentz force. In physics, the Lorentz force is the force on a point charge due to electromagnetic fields. It is given by the following equation in terms of the electric and magnetic fields. Trajectory of a particle with charge Q under the influence of magnetic field B directed perpendicular out of the screen for different values of Q. Magnetic force of a conductor. Consider a rod of uniform cross-sectional area A and length L. Let the number density for electrons in it be n. Then the total number of mobile charge carriers in it is NAL. For a steady current I in this conducting rod, we may assume that each mobile carrier has an average drift velocity Vd. In the presence of an external magnetic field B, the force on these carriers is given above. Where Q is the value of the charge on a carrier, now NQVD is the current density J. Thus, we get equation 2. We can calculate the Lorentz force on it by considering it as a collection of linear strips D1J and summed up as shown in the equation 3. Motion in a magnetic field We shall consider motion of a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field. First, consider the case of V perpendicular to B. The perpendicular force QV cross B acts as a centripetal force and produces a circular motion perpendicular to the magnetic field. The particle will describe a circle if V and B are perpendicular to each other as shown. If velocity has a component along B, this component remains unchanged as the motion along the magnetic field will not be affected by the magnetic field. The motion in a plane perpendicular to B is as before a circular one, thereby producing a helical motion. If R is the radius of the circular path of a particle, then a force of m v square r acts perpendicular to the path towards the center of the circle and is called a centripetal force. If the velocity v is perpendicular to the magnetic field B, the magnetic force is perpendicular to both v and B and acts like a centripetal force. It has a magnitude QVB. Equating the two expressions for the centripetal force, mv by r equals QVB, which gives r equals mv by QB. For the radius of the circle described by the charged particle, if omega is the angular frequency, we get omega equals 2 pi v, which equals QB by m. Aurora Borealis Auroras are natural colored light displays in the sky, usually observed at night particularly in the polar zone. They typically occur in the ionosphere. In northern latitudes, the effect is known as the aurora borealis. It often appears as a greenish glow or sometimes a faint red, as if the sun was rising from an unusual direction. The aurora borealis is also called the northern polar lights as it is only visible in the north sky from the northern hemisphere. The aurora borealis most often occurs from September to October and from March to April. Cyclotron. A cyclotron is a type of particle accelerator. Cyclotrons accelerate charged particles using a high frequency alternating voltage. A perpendicular magnetic field causes the particles to spiral almost in a circle so that they re-encounter the accelerating voltage many times. A modern cyclotron for radiation therapy is shown. Working of a cyclotron. A high frequency alternating voltage applied across the D electrodes alternatively attracts and repels charged particles. The particles injected near the center of the magnetic field accelerate only when passing through the gap between the electrodes. The perpendicular magnetic field combined with the increasing energy of the particles forces the particles to travel in a spiral path. With no change in energy, the charged particles in a magnetic field will follow a circular path. In the cyclotron, energy is applied to the particles as they cross the gap between the Ds and so they are accelerated and will increase in mass as they approach the speed of light. 
either of these effects will increase the radius of the circle and so the path will be spiral. The particles move in a spiral because a current of electrons or ions flowing perpendicular to a magnetic field experiences a perpendicular force. The radius will increase until the particles hit a target at the perimeter of the vacuum chamber. Various materials may be used for the target and the collisions will create secondary particles which may be guided outside the cyclotron and into instruments for analysis. The results will enable the calculation of various properties such as the mean spacing between the atoms and the creation of various collision products. biot savaret Law biot savaret Law is used to calculate the magnetic induction due to the current carrying conductor. Experiments Let us consider a conductor XY carrying current I. AB equals DL is a small element of the conductor. P is a point at the distance R from the midpoint O of AB. According to Biot and Savart, the magnetic induction dB at P due to the element of the length dL is A directly proportional to the current I, directly proportional to the length of the element dL, directly proportional to the sine of the angle between dL and the line joining the element dL and the point that is sine theta and inversely proportional to the square of the distance of the point from the element. Magnetic induction in a circular coil Consider a circular coil of radius A with a current I. P is a point along the axis of the coil at a distance x from the center O of the coil. AB is an infinitesimally small element of the length dL. C is the midpoint of AB and CP equals R. According to biot savaret law, the magnetic induction at P due to the element dL is shown above. The direction of dB is perpendicular to the current element IDL and CP. It is therefore along PR perpendicular to CP. Considering the diametrically opposite element A-B- the magnitude of dB at P due to this element is the same as that for AB but its direction along PM. Let the angle between the axis of the coil and the line joining the element DL and the point P be A. Ampere's Circular Law Ampere's law is a relationship between the tangential component of magnetic field at points on a closed curve and the net current through the area bounded by the curve. Ampere's law is formulated in terms of the line integral of B along a closed path. We divide the path into infinitesimal segments VL and for each one calculate the scalar product of B and DL. Consider a long straight conductor carrying a current passing through the center of a circle of radius r in a plane perpendicular to the conductor. Using biot savaret's law, we know already that the field at a distance r is mu naught i by 2 pi r. The field at all points in the circle and the direction is given by the tangent drawn to the circle at that point is shown above. Hence, Ampere's circular law can be stated as follows. The line integral of the magnetic field b around any closed path is equal to mu naught times the net current across the area bounded by the path. The solenoid and the toroid The solenoid and the toroid are two pieces of equipment which generate magnetic fields. The television uses the solenoid to generate magnetic fields needed. The synchrotron uses a combination of both to generate the high magnetic fields required. The solenoid It consists of a long wire wound in the form of a helix where the neighboring turns are closely spaced. The figure displays the magnetic field lines for a finite solenoid. We show a section of the solenoid in an enlarged manner in the figure A. Figure B shows the entire finite solenoid with its magnetic field. In figure A, it is clear from the circular loops that the field between two neighboring turns vanishes. In figure B, we see that the field of the interior midpoint P is uniform, strong and along the axis of the solenoid. The field of the exterior midpoint Q is weak and moreover, it is along the axis of the solenoid with no perpendicular or normal component. As the solenoid is made longer, it appears like a long cylindrical metal sheet. The figure represents this idealized picture. The field outside the solenoid approaches zero. We should assume that the field outside is zero. The field becomes everywhere parallel to the axis. The toroid. The toroid is a hollow circle ring on which a large number of turns of a wire are closely wound. We shall see that the magnetic field in the open space inside, that is point P, and the exterior to the toroid, point Q, is zero. The figure shows a sectional view of the toroid. 
The direction of the magnetic field inside is clockwise as per the right hand thumb rule for circular loops. Three circular Amperian loops 1, 2 and 3 are shown by dashed lines. By symmetry, the magnetic field should be tangential to each of them and constant in magnitude for a given loop. The circular areas bounded by loops 2 and 3 both cut the toroid so that each turn of current carrying wire is cut once by the loop 2 and twice by the loop 3. Let the magnetic field along the loop L be B1 in magnitude. Then in Ampere's circular law, L equals 2 pi R1. However, the loop encloses no current. So, IE equals 0. Thus, B1 into 2 pi R1 equals mu naught of 0 and B1 equals 0. Thus, the magnetic field at any point P in the open space inside the toroid is 0. We shall now show the magnetic field at Q is likewise 0. Let the magnetic field along the loop 3 be B3. Once again, for Ampere's law, L equals 2 pi R3. However, from the sectional cut, we see that the current coming out of the plane of the paper is cancelled exactly by the current going into it. Thus, IE equals 0 and B3 equals 0. Let the magnetic field inside the solenoid be B. We shall now consider the magnetic field at S. Once again, we employ Ampere's law in the form of equation. We find that L equals 2 pi R. Force on a conductor placed in a magnetic field. Consider PQ of length L and an area of cross section A. The conductor is placed in a uniform magnetic field of induction B, making an angle of theta. A current I flows along PQ. Hence, the electrons are drifted along QP with drift velocity VD. If N is the number of free electrons per unit volume in the conductor, then the current is shown above. The negative sign indicates the direction of current in opposite to the direction of drift velocity of the electrons. Since the electrons move under the influence of magnetic field, the magnetic Lorentz force on a moving electron, hence this total force on all the moving free electrons is the force of the current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field. Force between two parallel conductors. AB and CD are two straight, very long parallel conductors placed in air at a distance A and they carry current I1 and I2. The magnetic induction due to the current I1 in AB at a distance is shown. This magnetic field acts as a perpendicular to the plane of the paper and inwards. The conductor CD with current I2 is situated in this magnetic field. Hence, force on a segment of length L of CD due to the magnetic field B1 is shown above. By Fleming's left hand rule, faces towards left. Similarly, the magnetic induction due to the current I2 flowing in CD at a distance A is shown above. This magnetic field acts perpendicular to the plane of the paper and outwards. The conductor AB with current I1 is situated in this field. Hence, force on segment of length L of AB due to magnetic field B2 is shown. By Fleming's left hand rule, this force acts towards the right. These two forces, given in equation 2 and 4, attract each other. Hence, two parallel wires carrying currents in the same direction attract each other and if they carry current in opposite directions, repel each other. Talk by a current loop in a magnetic field. Consider a rectangle loop PQRS of length L and breadth P, which carries a current I along PQRS. The loop is placed in a uniform magnetic field of induction B. Let theta be the angle between the normal and the plane of the loop and the direction of the magnetic field. Then, the force F1 and F2 are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction and have the same line of action. Hence, the resultant effect on the loop is zero. The forces F3 and F4 are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction and have different line of action. Hence, they constitute a couple. Hence, the torque is maximum when the coil is parallel to the magnetic field and zero when the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Magnetic dipole defined as a system of two equal and opposite poles separated by a small distance. The figure shows magnetic dipole AB having north and south pole respectively each of strength M separated by a small distance 2L. The distance between the two poles of a magnetic dipole is 2L is called magnetic length. A bar magnet and current carrying solenoid or magnetic dipole. Magnetic dipole moment Magnetic dipole moment of a magnetic dipole is defined as the product of pole strength and the separation between the two poles. 
magnetic dipole moment denoted by vector m or by vector pm and it is a vector quantity. Its direction is always from south to north pole of the dipole. Vector m or vector pm is equal to m into vector 2l or m into 2l. Its SI unit is ampere meter square or joule per tesla or newton meter per tesla. Talk on a magnetic dipole. Consider a magnetic dipole of length 2L placed in a uniform magnetic field. Let M be the pole strength of each pole on the magnetic dipole. Let the magnetic dipole moment vector M make an angle theta with the direction of magnetic field vector B. If F is the magnitude of the force acting on each pole of the dipole, then F equals M into B. The two forces constitute a couple as these forces are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction and have different lines of action. If tau is the moment of the couple, then tau equals F into nt. The equation is shown above. The direction of the vector tau is such that the dipole density is to set itself parallel to the field strength vector B. If theta equals 90 degrees and B equals L, then M equals tau. That is, the dipole moment of the magnetic dipole is numerically equal to the torque required to keep the dipole perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field of unit strength. In the CGS system, the unit of magnetic dipole moment is dyne centimeter. In the SI system, the unit of magnetic dipole moment is newton meter per tesla. Moving coil galvanometer. Principle of a galvanometer. A moving coil galvanometer works on the principle that a current carrying coil kept in a uniform magnetic field experiences a torque. T equals NIAB sin theta, where N equals number of turns in the galvanometer coil, I equals current flowing through the coil, a equals area of the coil, B equals magnetic field, that is uniform magnetic field, and theta equals angle between the area vector and the magnetic field. Construction of moving coil galvanometer In a moving coil galvanometer, a coil rotates in a uniform magnetic field. Example, tangent galvanometer. Coil The coil is made up of insulated copper bound over a rectangular aluminium frame which is mounted over a soft iron sphere. Aluminium frame is used because it is light, it is not magnetic, eddy currents are produced in it and make the galvanometer deadbeat, that is move the coil to return it to its original position after the current has stopped passing. Phosphor bronze hairspring is used in the galvanometer which connects the galvanometer needle with the coil. Phosphor bronze is used because it provides least counter torque per unit deflection, increasing the sensitivity of the galvanometer. Cylindrical iron core Soft iron has very high magnetic permeability and attracts a large number of magnetic lines of force towards itself. This increases the magnetic field on the coil and increases the torque which again results in the increased sensitivity of the galvanometer. Concave shape of the magnetic poles Concave shape of the magnetic poles are used to make the magnetic field radial. That is, the magnetic field is directed towards the center, that is, towards the iron core, Working of moving coil galvanometer. When current is passed through the coil, it experiences a torque T equals NIAB, which rotates the galvanometer needle. The galvanometer needle becomes stationary when the torque due to the spring equals the torque due to the current. Mathematically, this can be given as C phi equals NIAB, where C equals torsional constant for the spring and phi equals galvanometer deflection.